I'm Mike, and today, Alan Savory. A really quick recap, in his TED Talk, he presented holistic management, in which you take grazing animals and put them on some desertifying land, pack them close together and move them around like they do in nature, and rivers start flowing again, and you sequester enough carbon to save the world. That simple. I can understand it. I learned about Alan Savory years ago when I was studying sustainability and still ate meat. It is very appealing to hear what he has to say, especially because every day there is a new compelling reason to give up meat, whether it's how animal agriculture is a leading cause of rainforest destruction, species extinction, dead zones, greenhouse gases, and how we're finding that hamburgers cause cancer, and just how you can not kill animals since we don't have any nutritional requirement for meat. The environmental reasons especially come together to make Savory's approach seem so appealing that you are likely not going to look thoroughly at his methods. Because of this, I ask that you do not put your trust in before and after pictures in which the inputs are unknown, but to put your trust in science. And as you will soon see, his methods have no peer-reviewed science backing them. There's even science showing that his methods do the opposite of the good effects he claims. And you also see that from a climate change perspective, his methods are scientifically impossible when it comes to carbon. And they also just encourage environmentally destructive animal products to be eaten. But do not worry, at the end of this video, we will look at some other big solutions. As a vegan, I am well aware that I'll be considered biased in this. So some of my most important main points are actually going to be from ranchers and other very non-vegan sources like that. All right, let's start with point number one, the first big lie, his methods work. Virtually all of his evidence is anecdotal or before and after pictures. Think about the TED Talk. Do you remember him presenting any actual real data about his methods? No, that's because after 40 plus years of promoting holistic management, as this 2014 paper states, there are still no peer reviewed studies that show that this management approach is superior to conventional grazing systems in outcomes. And from this review of literature on the subject authored by someone with a PhD in range science, there is a quote, lack of conclusive evidence on measurable benefits of holistic management grazing. We're expected to believe that we can reverse desertification and save the world from climate change by using a method that has yet to produce peer reviewed results or conclusive results after four decades using livestock, which contributes to both. All right, but let's look closer. What is holistic management? To understand that, it is important to look at short duration grazing, which is at the core of holistic management and is actually its predecessor. Quote, short duration grazing is a form of rotational grazing based on a short grazing period at very high stocking rates. So yeah, basically exactly what he describes in his TED talk. And this 2000 review of short duration grazing found that intense hoof pressure, like in Savory's technique, decrease water filtration into the soil. And when looking at 10 US studies on short duration grazing, four studies found that it was less productive, five studies showed no difference, and one study said that it was more productive. So nine to one studies show no benefit. They also cite reviews of 50 trials in Africa saying, quote, short duration grazing systems differ little in their effects upon range conditions and livestock production. It is also useful to look at intensive rotational grazing since it is synonymous with short duration grazing as this USDA paper shows. And looking again at this review by ranchers, the vast majority of experimental evidence does not support claims of this type of grazing. Despite being rigorously evaluated across many locations and zones, it does not increase soil carbon, it does not increase plant or animal production, and it doesn't even benefit surface hydrology compared to other grazing strategies. So short duration grazing obviously failed the massive amount of scientific tests that were done on it. And so Savory rebranded and thus holistic management and its plan grazing were born. But what actually is different about holistic management? After reading through this paper, it's pretty clear that it is simply short duration grazing with an emphasis on not overgrazing. Key principle number one, short duration grazing. Number two, don't overgraze. Number three, short duration grazing. Number four, don't overgraze. Number five, don't overgraze. Number six, don't overgraze and start a fire. Number seven, make a chart so you don't overgraze. Number eight, don't overgraze. Number nine, don't overgraze next season. Number 10, state of the plan so you don't overgraze. And finally, the vague holistic planned grazing is a process, not a recipe. In his TED talk, he says the only option left for mankind is to use livestock bunched in moving. There is no other alternative left to mankind. He doesn't say the only option left is to use livestock bunched and moving in association with a vague, scientifically unvalidated, highly involved planning system in which you have to pay my 
for-profit institute to learn. But there's to be some science out there in his favor. What about this paper that is often quoted to promote holistic management? It claims that, quote, holistic management practices have been shown to hold more soil carbon. But as these other scientists point out when looking at the citation for that claim, quote, the authors failed to recognize that Sanjari et al. did not find more soil organic carbon, and it was not statistically significant. So the little evidence that they have accumulated is dodgy. All of this comes together to paint a pretty clear picture that Savory's methods are unvalidated in terms of science, which makes sense because he said, quote, you'll find the scientific method never discovers anything. Now for line number two, his grazing methods reverse desertification. In his TED talk, he claims that about two thirds of the world is actively desertifying and basically circles the entire world on a map. When in reality, 38% of the world is considered quote, arid regions at risk of desertification. But the exaggerations don't end there. Now for the caloric paradox of grazing in a desert. Cows require 18 mega calories a day, which is a ton of food. Here's one of the before images that Alan Savory presents. How many calories can be on there? Something is telling me that Alan Savory cannot defy the laws of physics. And from this 2002 review on the chartered grazing trials that tested on over 6,000 acres, supplemental feed costs were higher for the two Savory grazing systems. He never said anything about feeding the cows. Dang it, you can't defy the laws of physics by putting animals close together? Now I have to stop eating meat. Fine, but Alan Savory's land in Africa has a river where everyone else's has dried up. Surprise, the rich white guy in Africa can afford to give his cows water effectively irrigating his land. And that stream just, how do we know it didn't just rain recently? Have we learned nothing from before and after pictures on infomercials? The bottom line is cattle need water in the desert. According to Gerard Wedderburn Bishop, a lead scientist at the World Preservation Foundation, quote, what Savory does not mention is that intensive grazing is only viable where water points are close. So his methods need water too. And how do they even compare to direct irrigation? We don't know. As for those amazing before and after pictures, one of the authors of that study he cites on the Jornada range claims that Savory was taking one of his pictures and misassociating the location altogether. How deep does this rabbit hole go? Finally, the leading cause of desertification is animal agriculture, not just because of overgrazing, but also because we're cutting down forests to make land for grazing and also to grow feed for animals, which Alan Savory's methods do require supplemental feed as we've shown. And it is extremely important to note that if you are trying to replace all of the meat that we're consuming now with grass fed meat, there would not be enough room on the earth. Now for lie number three, grazing can reverse climate change. To accommodate your attention span, I've broken this up into two parts and you're at the end of part one. For part two, please click here. Alan, Alan, Alan. Alan! Alan! Al! Alan! 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 Alan!